rapping was my way of not becoming private since coming away from the school. Okay. Because if I'm in a school and I'm helping 200 kids a day, let's say, maybe 120 of them wouldn't be able to afford it outside. Mm -hmm. Maybe 80 of them would. Mm -hmm. But essentially, I'm there for everyone. Mm -hmm. I thought, when it came to the last year I was in the school, I was like, yeah, I'm going to leave next year. I said, hang on. When I leave, the only kids that will have access to me will be those that have parents that can afford it. And I was like, oh, gosh. I'm all for paying the mortgage and getting by, but it didn't sit, it didn't sit right with me. So that's where the rapping came in. I mm. thought, as long as, obviously, I need to have my own business <laughs> to be able to eat and survive. But as long as I can do something that helps everyone, mm. then, then I can sleep at night and, and so I sleep happy. Steminism. The Equity and STEM podcast, sponsored by the Royal Society of Chemistry, where we hold conversations about race representation in STEM with the greatest minds in industry and academia. Hello and welcome to STEMinism, the Equity and STEM podcast, where we hold engaging conversations about race representation in the realm of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've got an absolutely amazing episode lined up for you today. We have a special guest whose journey start, started off with a bachelor's degree in biochemistry, followed by a master's degree in neuroscience. Okay. And then he went on to wrap it all together with a PGC in teaching. And that was the beginning of an amazing teaching career as a science teacher. Uh, and from there, he went on to become a head of department from chemistry. We're not done. We're only, we're only halfway yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Scratching the surface here. Scratching the surface. Ooh, I'm blushing here. <laughs> from, from there, he went on to set up JGM Science Tutors, which is an amazing institution that focuses on giving one-to-one -one and group tutoring to science at O-level and A-levels, I believe. Still not done. Whilst we were all in the pandemic figuring out how we were going to survive, he was busy in the lab putting together, creating and almost metamorphosizing what we now to know today as the rapping science teacher, the, the, the rapping science teacher, sorry. He's gone on to amass almost a million followers across numerous platforms, hundreds of millions of likes and comments. And most importantly, we believe he's inspired countless students, individuals to, to reach their true aspirations in STEM. Today, we are joined by none other than the rapping science teacher, Mr. Matt Green. Hey guys, much appreciate for that introduction. <laughs> let's go, let's I've go. Number one, thank you for that. And number two, how on earth do you remember that? <laughs> That's a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. The same way you remember the bars. Yeah, the same yeah. way you remember hey, the I've bars. I've got secrets to remember those bars. I'll, re I'll reveal later, but I, I have to do that. And I have to break those sorts of things down into about 10 segments. Yeah. So I have a lot of appreciation for what I just saw. Well, um, I'm sure you saw me add you on the LinkedIn recently. So I was definitely checking the resume, <laughs> making, sure, making sure I had it all lined up. Oh, but, but honestly, it's, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. Hey, I'm um, happy to be here. I've been invited. It's a pleasure. Ali, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, absolutely, man. So um, I always like to start at the beginning. I think it's okay. uh, you get an idea of the kind of person someone is when you see like where they grew up and the sort of dynamics that they grew up in. So can you just like tell us a little bit about young Matt? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think you grew up in the area where we are here, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, maybe about the family dynamics you grew up in and like the culture, maybe that shaped you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I did grow up roughly around here, mm -hmm. uh, Wood Green slash Muswell Mos Hill. Um, and yeah, my dad was uh, my dad was of, of West Indian descent, so he's Trinidadian, mm -hmm. and my mum was English, and they were both educators, so both English teachers. So wow. they, they instilled in me from that young age, um, education, education, <laughs> education. Um, and yeah, I think obviously that, that, that obviously came into me in some yeah. way. And yeah, I think early days, I had primary school, I was always interested in science, I was just to know how things worked. And that just continued into my secondary school years where I did science for GCSE and then A level and beyond was the route it had to be. So hence I did a degree in two degrees in science and then science teaching had to be the thing for me. Yeah. What was your favorite science subject? It's got to be a mixture of biology and chemistry. Okay. Hence, hence the You're on the, right side, chemistry. Of You're yeah. on the right side of it. Physics uh, is tough, man. Yeah, physics I can just say tough. not physics. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't dislike <laughs> it. I just, I don't know yeah. as much about it. 
But I still you see dropping see dropping them gems uh, yeah. in a physics perspective as well. So. They just take a bit longer. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Fair play. That's right. That I can't imagine what it would have been like being at home with with two teachers. You kind of go to school, you're taught, you come back, and, and you get an extra <laughs> dose. How did you? Were, were there any fundamental life lessons that you learned at that early stage um, that kind of got you that that passion for STEM, or was it a case of schoolwork, homework? There's there's it almost blends into one. <laughs> Oh gosh, I think I think both my parents, but I mean, I can remember particularly my dad would would always ask me, like, sort of encourage me to question things, mm-hmm. um, and and yeah, how things worked. I remember growing up watching Tomorrow's World, loving mm. Star Trek, um, not so much Star Wars, but definitely Star Trek, yeah, and, yeah. and loving the idea of like how's that shit move that fast? Mm. If you zoom into things, what are things made of? I wanted to know what atoms were before I knew they were a word. And then when I got to secondary school, and I was taught, oh, these little things are called atoms, and I was like. What are they made of? And that was before I even knew about protons, neutrons, and electrons. And then I wanted to know what they were made of. So, <laughs> um, yeah. That, Curious that's, mind. Yeah. Curious always. mind. I think that's like a a common trait in science scientists, science teachers, yes. um, and generally across them. So yeah, nice to hear. That's really interesting. Was it the same for you guys? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to pick everything apart. Um, I was always destroying the latest gadget that my dad bought me until until he decided he was no longer going to do it. <laughs> so I just kept kept destroying everything. But I really wanted to get to the bottom of, of everything like it was a mystery or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think mine was was nature. I, I love being outside. I mean, we, but when we were young, we outside wasn't a thing. We were <laughs> naturally outside all yeah. the time and playing outside, climbing trees. That was yeah what got my passion. And I think from there it was like, okay. As you said, the lab, the lab's got some answers in there. When, yeah. you, when you go in there and you put some, you adjust certain things here and there, you, you get some interesting output. So mm. I think that's where my, my curiosity stemmed from, yeah. Okay, okay. So I think you had a, a BSc in biochemistry and then yeah. you went on to do a master's in neuroscience, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's can it. You, uh, can you talk to me about like what led you down that direction and then how did you then go from there to decide, I want to be a teacher? So... I was always fascinated by how the brain worked. Uh-huh. So in biochemistry, we learned about you know the fundamentals of, of, of you know chemistry and how it interacts, how things chemicals interact in the body. But at one part of my lectures, it, we went into a little bit about the, the biology of various things, um, and therefore I became fascinated with how the brain worked. So when I finished my degree, and I thought, what am I going to do with myself now? I saw a mar- neuroscience thing come up at um, Imperial College. I thought, let me try my luck, and I got on it, and I loved that course. It was six months taught and then six months of project. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, it was great. I loved it. Like, I can't say how much I remember now, but <laughs> the, the research part in terms of expl- trying to work out what part of the brain processed movement. Okay. Um, and con- connected to the vestibular system. Okay. Um, and yeah, that was that was really cool. Experimenting on volunteers and spinning them on a chair in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time it works well. Every now and again, it go haywire and spin the roof. I'm, I'm sure all scientists are just about the crazy experiments, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Like, at the heart of it all, we just want to do fun things in a in a controlled way. That's, it, that's, <laughs> it. that's funny. And then and then, what about becoming a teacher from there? So when, when I finished that degree, um, I went into sales. Okay. Is, yeah, and I was bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> I was bad. I was probably the worst there, but I did like explaining things to people. I always liked people. Um, and during my degree, and there's a, f- a few things I did after my degree where I, I'd work with students and, and teach, essentially. So when it came to thinking, I'm not going to do sales, it will work for me. Teaching was mm. a natural fit. And uh, I must have liked it because I stuck with it for 10 years. And, you know, I, I left being sad about leaving to go into other things. Um, so, yeah, it was a very enjoyable career. I look back on it very fondly. Amazing, amazing. I always find it quite interesting. Just when we were growing up, it was almost you have to pick and choose. You're going down science or you're going down the arts route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In hindsight now, now that you're the rapping science teacher, you've almost been able to merge the arts and the science and the sciences or STEM. I think they call it STEAM, don't STEAM, they? STEAM, yeah. STEAM. Uh-huh. STEM with the arts. Uh-huh. Yeah. How did you go about kind of navigating that middle ground? Did you have a bit of an internal conflict at some point? And yeah, how how did the rapping scientist come about, science teacher. I think probably it was a confidence thing, I think, for years. I think I wasn't confident to just get on the mic and start spitting bars. That that was the issue. Uh, and I thought, no, I can't really do that. Just, it's not going to work. Um, even though I wrote in my early years and practiced in the dark, in, yeah. <laughs> in secret. Um, but then, you know, you get older, you know, you get bigger, you get confident. And you think, you know, what, like, what is actually the worst that's going to happen? 
if I get on the mic and start rapping, I'm not, I'm not gonna die. Mm, yeah. No one else is gonna die. Mm. The worst thing someone can be like is this rubbish. And I was like, that's really doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, or I could get on the mic, and it could help people. So it was definitely worth the risk. I think I was. I might be shortening the story a little bit. <laughs> but the idea to actually doing it might have taken like a year, but eventually I just bit the bullet. I went yeah. to a studio in Brixton, dropped these 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 bars that I'd been writing, and uh, and then one day about a week later, press post and uh, and yeah, and no one hated it. No one hated it. I've got ten views. Most of them being my wife and mum. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your core cool supporters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the obligatory yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no one hated it. And uh, and yeah, I kept it going for six months, getting my 10 views until one day, made one little change scientifically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You change the mm-hmm. variable. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then it flew. Madness. Um, but yeah, navigating the arts and, and the science, it was... It was I think it was just confidence that kept me off the mic. Mm-hmm. I look back at my life now and think, could I have done it differently? I wouldn't have because I'm happy with how things have turned out, but I would have said just nothing bad is going to happen. Yeah. If you, yeah. If, you, if you chase a dream or, you know, so go for it. That's, That's a great. good lesson, man. Good lesson. To everyone out there listening, <laughs> chase your dream, yeah. Even if you're not like fully convinced it's the best idea, someone's going to bite into it. Yeah. I remember when one of my, my earliest mentors, when I started working, told me, oh, yeah, if you, if you want to be truly successful, follow your passion. And I remember thinking, passion's not going to pay these bills yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think what the important lesson was actually if you tap into it and you're not afraid because I think you're right there's that kind of imposter syndrome telling you that it's going to be terrible and that yeah. it's not going to be great and people are going to laugh at you when I think a lot of it especially the early on no one really cares that yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, much yeah. and once you get out of your your own way to some extent amazing things can happen mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah. I think that's some great encouragement mm-hmm. so like What's your, what's your, what's, I just want to talk about music for a bit of a kid. Okay. Okay. You know, it's kind of at the core of this, right? So like, what's your connection to hip hop and rap? Does it go like, is it a long, long relationship that you have with it? Or like, suppose, what's your story? I suppose it must be 25 years now. Yeah. If I'm nearly 36 and I've done secondary school 11. Yeah. So yeah, for Tupac was probably the, the artist I've, I've loved the most. Uh-huh. Um, 50 Cent's got to be in there as well. Um, but yeah, I, secondary school, listened to them for all my teenage years and continued into my 20s and even now. Yeah. Even the new stuff I like. Um, but, you know, the English grime MCs, the Skeptors, the Wileys, you know, I love those guys. And, you know, they've, yeah, I would say they've influenced my rapping style and and what you hear in my, in my science raps for sure. Absolutely, yeah. You can definitely hear it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you like mentioned it. 50 Cent. There was one that you did recently, which is about... Uh, moles and molar mass how to how to calculate the amount of a reactant in in a in a, in a reaction and it was over 50 cent it was amazing yeah it. <laughs> it was like a love song to moles <laughs> <laughs> that um, was it. yeah it was a little bit um yeah it's a little bit sing song on the chorus part but um yeah you gotta experiment yeah, 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 you gotta yeah. experiment yeah. i think so and i think that especially i think the, the niche around that as well is and i think you've spoken about it in other podcasts we all love music we're all able to recite lyrics off the crack of a whim and the fact that you were able to combine the two I think was not only genius but you've seen by the growth that you seen how contagious it is as well and yeah, yeah. some after listening to a couple of your videos I find I'm re- uh, reciting substrates and membranes and <laughs> enzymes I'm, I'm sorry for all, that no, it works no, now. it's it all good and, man I mean it's better than some of the explicit lyrics yeah, that we sing anyway yeah, so yeah. so why not remix yeah. them and I think it's it's definitely Made science cool. I think we, we when we were growing up, even when you look at a lot of the role models, I used to love Dexter, Dexter's lab. And he yeah. always had the sellotape glasses and was always getting wound up. And I've always wanted to do science, but science wasn't necessarily sexy as it were. Whereas yeah. now I think with more representation among scientists and science teachers, people can see actually, oh, I, I can be a science teacher. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I can be myself whilst yeah, being a yeah. science teacher, which is which is great. Um, black black culture is infectious and there is somehow a lot of coolness associated with it so mm, i think taking it there is a not only difficult by the way to produce good science bars it's hard so yeah, first yeah. of all respect for that <laughs> and the second it. of all like making it land you know you've got albums now and as 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 far as i'm aware you're a tiktok sensation so uh one million followers uh amassed over tiktok instagram yeah, and yeah. uh 
Yeah. Can you maybe just talk a little bit about that video that you made in Brixton? Like, what have been some of the key steps to your progression to get you to where you are now at 1 million views? Can you maybe just drop a little couple nuggets? Couple yeah, nuggets yeah, of, of course. I'm, I always aim not to bore people to death. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and summarize this. Yeah. But in a nutshell, the writing process always comes down to does this musically sound good? Mm -hmm. So it's got to have the rhyming and the, the sort of the, 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 the patterns of, of, of where syllables drop. Cadence. Cadence. Mm -hmm. that has, that's that's got to be key. Um, I don't like sort of wonky sounding bars just because it, a sentence makes sense. But at the same time, and this kills me sometimes, it has to have the cadence and the rhyming. And it has to make sense as if it didn't rhyme. Mm. Yeah, so, so a tough one to so, match. Isn't yeah, it? so like I, I can't separate either one of those. So some, I have written something sometimes. It's like da 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 da. Bam! I hear it. I go, oh, that 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 sounds good. And then I thought, yeah, that's good enough to put out. And it hasn't performed as well. And I look back and I, you know the analysis. And I'm like, if I didn't get this topic, and I just entered this song as a student, would it make crystal clear sense? Mm. And I got to be brutal with myself, and I'm like, the answer is no. Mm. The answer is no. Um, whereas some of the songs that, that have done extremely well, like The Heart, like I'm saying this because I can remember the lyrics to it. I think the lyrics are something like, let's dive right in, I'll tear it apart. Four chambers and two, uh, and two ventricles, two chambers, something like that. Whatever I'm saying, it's matter of fact. It's yeah. fact. And yeah. it's, just, it's just crystal clear. It just happens to rhyme and fit a flow mm. pattern. That, that's sick. But those two things have to be there. And if one of them's a miss, um, it doesn't, doesn't do anywhere near as well. If anything, though, I don't know what to say it. The flow pattern and rhyming can be the one that can be the lower. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the content and, and the and the message being understood is more important more than important. Yeah. trying to sound like a sick rapper. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. From, from an artistic <laughs> perspective, I, uh -huh. like, I don't like, if I don't like how it sounds, I just have to drop the whole bar and re redo it because wow. it has to have both, just for me personally. Um, but that's just the writing process. Since the first song I dropped in, I, I recorded in Brixton, the way I express words is totally different. Mm. I don't think maybe the casual person would hear it or be aware of it, but I'm aware of it. And now I hear it when I hear rappers. Like I didn't think much, I thought they were just talking and had a certain flow pattern. Um, but I didn't realize there's more than cadence, there's tones, there's intonation, there's emotion, there's little expressiveness. Mm -hmm. And as the consumer, we just consume it. We're not like, oh, yeah. Stones' new soul was sick when he's mm -hmm. in it. You just, it just, it's just it's right. Under. And it's like, like I always used to say this with photography. You can see an amateur photo, but you won't be like, oh, I can see it's a bit blurry there. That bit's not sensor. It's just, that's not, that's yeah, not professional. Yeah, yeah. Why? Well, I don't know. I'm not a photographer, but it just isn't. Mm. But if someone says you're a professional photo, like, that's professional. Again, you can't you say know. why, but it just right. isn't. It's the same with, with, the, with rapping. You can hear when it's a professional rap. Yeah. And you can hear when it's not. And I think now, I would like to think the ones I drop now are uh, sounding close to very professional. But the early ones I can hear, the flow's there, the rhyme's there. But the other bits weren't. No, I can I can definitely attest to that to that improvement. I think what makes it even harder is that you're not just rapping to sell to sell albums, as it were, and so you can't even jump into the lame of the mumble rap. Whereas I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're actually trying to make your words very clear so people can understand, learn, and take it from there. And I think that adds to the layer of complexity. So yeah, I think. Sometimes people take it for face value when they watch a, a social media clip and it's gone viral and it's got all these views. But actually, there's so much experimentation, so much testing. Yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, I, I think it's great that we can hopefully yeah, give you some, some recognition, some mm -hmm. appreciation for Thank that you. as well. Um, maybe switching lanes a bit and going back to your, your teaching career. Um, we know that you started off as a science teacher, moved up to, to the head of chemistry, I believe it was, yeah, in, it. in a couple of schools. What was the journey like in 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 school or, or teaching in school? Um, were there many other teachers that looked like you? Did you have any challenges in representation or that regards? In the first school I worked at, I think I think representation, especially among black staff members, was probably higher than national average. I, I did a research thing because I thought I was going to do something for the news a few months back, so mm. I, I, I fact checked these things. Mm. I think it's three percent, yeah, black in the UK. Yes, and in the school that I worked at, anecdotally, I can't be certain on this, but it definitely wasn't 3%. It was probably between 10 and 30%. Oh, wow. Fair play. Um, at least 10, because I was just trying to look at the staff members. I said, there's 100 members of staff, though, definitely 10 yeah. as a minimum, but probably, yeah, it could have been 25. But in the last school I worked at was at, you know, at Watford or Bushy. 
was probably one, two. Put myself as half. <laughs> <laughs> probably fit the. <laughs> If you round me up, <laughs> that, that puts it to 3%. I, well, think. I don't know if people <laughs> got that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that, that, that was probably close to what, what, what nationally was. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, it's an interesting one. I don't think it ever affected me in any mm-hmm. way that I can measure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it was... Remind me of the question here. The like, question, so in terms of what, what was the experience like, maybe going from one school where it was overrepresented to maybe to some extent to one where it was more at the national average, did you have any challenges um, or did you have any mentors or any exposure that helped you rise through the ranks in those times? I had mentors in my first school because I was started as a, essentially as a TA mm. and did my training to become a teacher, then became something that was called... Um, a senior management associate, I think it was called. And then I became, <laughs> yeah. oh, the mouthful now. Sometimes I think they just make up titles, titles. man. These titles, honestly. <laughs> At the time, I was like, oh, I'm a senior management associate. <laughs> what they does go, that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, it doesn't matter. But anyway, it helped me. So it was, it was good. Um, and then, so I became head of chemistry. Then I used that to get into the next school. And, uh, and yeah, I think I had a revelation at some point going to the next school because I wanted to progress up the ranks. Um, but the way my brain works, I think I struggled. So I'm trying to work out like what actions could help career wise. Yeah. As a teacher, yeah. I'm trying to help the kids. That's my be all and end all. But it's almost like trying to run through hoops to yeah. jump up the next rungs in a career. Um, and it doesn't always make sense to me as to what you can do. Hence, I start my own business because that does make sense. You just work hard, get clients, get more money in, invest more, step up. And no one can tell you whether it's a good idea or not. You just fail at a few things and then change them. So hence I went into the, the business um, and then decided to peel back from the school mm-hmm. and then jump on this, um, which was my way. Essentially, the, rap, the rapping was my way of not becoming private since coming away from the school. Okay. Because if I'm in a school and I'm helping 200 kids a day, let's say, maybe 120 of them wouldn't be able to afford it outside. Mm. Maybe eight of them would. Mm. But essentially, I'm there for everyone. Mm. I thought, when it came to the last year I was in the school, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to leave next year. I said, like, hang on. When I leave, the only kids that will have access to me will be those that have parents that can afford it. And I was like, oh, gosh. I'm all for paying the mortgage and getting by, but it didn't sit, it didn't sit right with me. So that's where the rapping came in. I thought, mm. as long as, obviously, I need to have my own business <laughs> to be able to eat and survive. But as long as I can do something that helps everyone, mm. Then, then I can sleep at night and, and so I sleep happy. <laughs> you kind of reminded, reminded me of like some of the issues with mentoring where you have these like short one-to-one relationships with people and it's really hard to scale it up because, um, you know, you're, you're literally only speaking to one person. You, you're definitely giving them, them some game, but it's a really, really cool approach that you've taken to try and like publicize this and get this to the masses. So um, Thank you. kudos to you. Thank you. Um, you mentioned your business. Yeah, JGM yeah. Science Cheaters. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Can you uh, give us the marketing pitch? Um, <laughs> what you do as your company, um, and like maybe what your vision is, and what makes them best in class as well. That's mm. that's what the people want to know. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, in a nutshell, we market ourselves as a science specialist teaching agency. Initially started for doing one to one only, but now we do one to one group and corporate and in schools. So okay. we've, we've diversified a little bit. And we've also diversified by not just doing science only. So we've got 90 tutors with us now. Wow. And probably around 50 of them, 50, 60, are pure science. We've got English, maths, languages, everything. Um, and yeah, our, our specialty is the fact that we only take on teachers that have been doing it for years. They've got the reference check, DBS check, and they have to go by me and interview. So if I like someone's CV, like how they sound on the phone, I invite them to interview and I see what they're like. So if I can see they're a people person, they can get on with the parents. I can see that they like uh, young people and I can see young people liking them. Then if they teach me a lesson, they've got that pizzazz and that flair, then then they can, they'll can they be part of us. Um, and that recipe's worked quite well because it's the growth has been there. And our positive reviews, I think we're like 4.5 on Trustpilot and five stars on Facebook and five stars on Google. Um, and I think our worst reviews is four star. And I think in seven years... 
Impressive. The number of complaints that we've had. The worst complaint we've had is someone not amazingly happy with their first lesson. Did you make them drop a 16 bars or something? (laughs) (laughs) In the interview process. (laughs) Drop a 16 as you're not getting through. (laughs) Yeah, so we're doing something right. Um, But yeah, we're just going to continue and probably scale it. So we've got a few little things to try. We've got a few little things to do. Not not too secretive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, we want an online resource as well as the tutoring. Yeah, um, but that's a work in progress at the moment. Fair play, man. Fair play. It's really, really amazing work. I'm like, I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, send the kids over. I'm yeah. like, my kids too. So it's not ready yet. But <laughs> get them on the way. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, see, disclaimer: I said I used to be a terrible salesman. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I then worked on it. <laughs> that's right. You're kind of right. selling when you speak to kids, to be honest, because kids don't want to hear it for the most part, especially between like. 14 to 18 yeah yeah yeah. so i think you need to have a certain swagger and a certain pitch to be able to connect with um students at that age yeah it's true mm-hmm. i mean so i mean all sales is 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 essentially communication connection yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and um, i think you've touched on on the creative and, and the music side of piece and i think we even touched on the fact that you've got a couple of videos lined up that you shoot and you're in the process or you're in that content creator process how do you deal with with burnout or the overwhelming the overwhelmingness of of being a content creator sometimes? And as you said, churning out video after video, and some do great, others get two likes from your your mom and the yeah, neighbor yeah, down yeah. the road. <laughs> How do you deal with that? How do you got not like get your soul sucked by the algorithm? Because I feel like it wants it wants your blood, you yeah. know. It wants your, like at least your attention. Yeah. So it's very how do you true. navigate? Um, I think I've been quite lucky with with the avenue I've taken. Because I've basically got a curriculum to cover, that keeps me covered with content. So, you know, there's a wealth of things that are in the UK GCSE science curriculum, and I'm just covering everything everything in order. Well, I say in order, roundabout order. And I did see one of the the questions that you sent me ahead of time. It talked about the creative process Mm. in terms of the beats and how they marry up with, with the subject matter. And that's the reason why they're not in order. Sometimes, you know, a beat comes to me like a, was it last week? One Dance by Drake. Mm. Mm. I put a thing out to kids. I rarely do this, but every now and again, I was like, what, what song would you like? And I looked through the list. I was like, nope, nope, nope. One <laughs> Dance Drake. I was like, One Dance by Drake. Mm. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I've never thought of that. And I played the instrument straight away and I was like, da, 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 da. and as it came to me, and it doesn't need to, like, I can't work prescriptively based on my next topic. Yeah. I can't think, oh, yeah. I'm going to cover homostasis. That has to fit to One Dance. It has to be One Dance and it could be anything because mm. my creativity is already hampered mm. by the fact that it's got to be science. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. everything it needs to be an open plate. <laughs> and eventually something came to me and I think it's pretty good that should be coming next, no, this Friday actually. This one so, dance was so, a big tune. Now yeah, that's a real yeah, summer yeah, vibes yeah, tune. So yeah. I'll be looking forward to that. Um, and that's out of my comfort zone because you know, that's that's a sung one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. you got to deliver as well. People yeah. want that from yeah. like, it's a Drake <laughs> instrumental. They want that, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair play. Um, so yeah, you've sort of worked out how to play it to your advantage rather than feeling like you're spending all of your life on Instagram. That's it. And <laughs> I think there were, there, there were, have been times and there are still some times, you know, you, you know, some of these things take me 10, 20 hours to make mm-hmm. um, and you have expectations and I kind of think you have to have those expectations. Like it, it, you, so you can't win in, in one way. I could sort of just put seven hours into it, be relaxed. Yeah, if it gets 10 views, it gets 10 views. If it gets a million, it gets a million. The problem is, if you don't gear yourself up mentally from the beginning of the creative process to do it in such a way that it can get a million, I, I think it's unlikely that it will. Yeah. Mm. Because there are all these nuances. When I'm writing, I'd be like, oh, could I? yeah, it's good enough. When I'm filming something, yeah, it's good enough. And those good enough to add up and it'll just be mediocre. Mm. Whereas if Truth. It's, <laughs> 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 Where if it's agonizing and sometimes like, I think, you know, a funny, funny, I haven't mentioned this before, but one of the hardest songs to write was um, Kanye West's Runaway. Mm-hmm. That took hours. That's literally took about eight hours just to write the lyrics because it was the whole, does that sound good? No, let me change it. Does that make sense? No, let me, ch-. and that kept happening. Wake up, chuck those four bars away. <laughs> and honestly, you know, that kept going because the whole idea is, I think this can be phenomenal. Yeah. And then yeah. shooting it, I, re- I think, I did this with a 50 cent video for in the club. Again, this was obsession. Came home, I filmed it, it took an hour. I was on a shoot at the time the next day, so I was doing my editing in the cab. It's like, 
I don't like this. <laughs> so I chucked the, sh- the, all the, sh- the, all the footage away. We were did, like, did oh it again. <laughs> I came back the next day and the camera looked at the better footage. I was like, that's it. I still don't like this. <laughs> and I chucked it away again. And, uh, and so therefore, mentally, I'm gearing myself up for it to hit a million. Mm. And when it doesn't, it's going to be disappointing. But in the instance of that in the club one, hit like 2 million immediately. Mm. On your West one, got like 10,000 the first night, which is bad for me in terms of to be on a trajectory mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. goodness. But what I've noticed over time what makes me feel a little bit better is the algorithm is not always instant. Mm-hmm. And from September in 2023, I noticed there's loads of things I'd put out. They would get 10K in the first day. And for me, 100K is a good evening yeah. on Friday. So yeah. it's 10K, I'm a bit, you know, a bit upset about it. But then I wake up in the morning, it could be on 40. And then on Saturday, it can start to creep up. Or sometimes I've had ones, they stay on 10K for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Then they start to creep up. Mm. So what I try to do is put them out. Let it go. And let then, it go. And then, and then let it go. Because oh it could God. be that it, it takes a process of a month. And it's a waste of time, me being upset for 10K views on that first Friday. Exactly. When in six weeks time, it burned half a million. And it was a waste of me being upset. So I just yeah. put it out. And then whatever happens, happens. I've done my absolute best on it. And don't. Don't worry about how it does now. I love yeah. that. Mm. Uh, Social I media need, masterclass, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm like, I need it. to summarize those nuggets. So like 10 to 20 hours, maybe it takes. Put in that time to make your content. Post and drop. Don't spend too much of your time thinking about what it should have done. But also reflect and remember like, how could have this been been, been better for next time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that continuous kind of improvement. Balance. And yeah. I think as Matt was talking, I could definitely relate. There's been times when We've literally been halfway through a podcast and I've been like, Ali, now you, you got to start that again. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the red in your eye. Like, but when it comes out, it's a whole lot better. And I think it's that continuous improvement and that continuous drive, but also not being too harsh on yourself mm-hmm. as well. So yeah, yeah. I think those are some real, real gems. There. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I think you. we, we recently saw you on on. BBC Breakfast, which mm. uh, again, uh, we didn't add that actually. Yeah, TV, yeah. TV sensation TV to go with the social media. Man. Come on. How's it the been? reception. Yeah. How's it been? Um, re- re- kind of, because I think social media is one thing. Mm. TV is a completely different ball game. How has it been transitioning from one to the other? Um, what has been the feedback when people hear that you're a teacher, but they also hear, yeah, actually you're, you're, you're a rap artist as well. What's, what's been the feedback been like? People always find it an interesting one because like the two don't naturally go together, which is why I put them together in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, feedback's been good. The, the transition to TV, um, you know, it's been mainly from the help of, of, of my manager. So I've got a manager now, which is about, I think, almost a year ago. So I just managed to get on TV on my own, um, managed to, to get the attention. Of uh, of a few few other news outlets, and I was like, I think it's time for a manage, manager. Mm-hmm. Um, I was lucky to get a very good one, Wendy Wolfson, talent and PR. Big up Wendy Wolfson. Yeah, big up Wendy. <laughs> and uh, hi Ross, we might yeah, we, we want to be on TV too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's interesting TV because it's, it's it's a totally different platform. Um, sort of more long form content, and you just automatically reach millions. Um, and you reach an audience, you wouldn't reach ordinarily. Mm. Um, I enjoy it. I think I, I still get like sort of sort of semi sick with nerves every time, but like I always think of everything. I, I felt that at the beginning of rapping. I felt that at the beginning of the teaching. Yeah. Like, I kind of feel like yeah. any growth, any like, next level improvement, that has to happen. If you get to the point where it's not happening with anything, then I think mm. you pro- you're probably not getting to the next point. Agree. Agree. Yeah. 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 I got to hit you with a controversial one. Hey. Maybe. <laughs> Depends how controversial. <laughs> So, BBC Breakfast. Okay. Okay, you're being interviewed. And I played this to my wife as well, because I listened to it and I was like, that was a weird question. I played it to my wife and she thought the exact same thing. I so really want to hear this because I, I have an idea in my mind what you're going to say. But okay. <laughs> so she said, uh, she said, what kind of assurances have you got in place to make sure your videos are safe for children? And I was like... What? Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> like, I was like, is this a su- subtle dig about like hip hop, grime, and rap culture being like, you know, how they labeled grime as like urban, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, like yeah, stop yeah. people going to clubs for this reason because you know what happens in these urban clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you get the question? And just wondered if you had any comments about like, what did you think when you heard that? Did you think that that's what she was asking you? When she felt because I had the context in my mind because I had been briefed on it's all to do with um, 
It was to do with AI nonsense. Mm. Okay. So the whole the whole news article was about kids going online and seeing something that's really professionally made, that's made mm-hmm. by AI. And saying the pyramids of Egypt were built in space. Um, <laughs> that's why they did it. But it said like absolute fact. Yeah. And all da, 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 and it's producing kids watch this and they played it to kids and the kids were like, they asked them, is this like what do you think of this? They're like, oh, really interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> like one in ten was like, that, that's not true. Crazy. But they, were, they didn't give them any context and they were just like, I didn't know that. And they're worried about kids do this. So they brought me in on us. An expert, I don't know what they brought me in on, but they brought me into, you know, from an educating perspective yeah, standpoint. Yeah. Um, so uh, what her question was about the assurances on on my, I think she minced her question personally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because it, when it became personal, like, like what assurance do I take? Like I was like, don't get flustered on the <laughs> first thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> number two, don't get angry on it. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Answer what you think with a smile. And I don't think yeah. I don't think I asked her again what the question was. Uh-huh. I think I just thought, ah, just go straight into what you think is the answer yeah. with confidence. And yeah. hopefully anyone watching will think, oh, he must he must know what he's doing. Um, and yeah, I think I asked. I think I said, yeah, my assurances are I checked three resources. Yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 da. I thought I gave a good answer. Very good answer. But <laughs> when she responded to it, I um I feel that she didn't ask the question she wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Asked because she went. Let's go to someone else. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so when I was there, it was a, it was a funny experience for me because it, it was my first experience not being face to face and not having a video. So okay. Obviously, what we're doing right now is we the best format. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you know, second to that would be us if we were good internet connection, mm-hmm. but we can see and hear each other, right? Yeah. And it, on TV, I've done literally all formats, but that particular format was I can hear you in my ear very badly. I can't see you because I can't look at the camera. So all I could look down was the camera and hear in my ear. And I couldn't hear well. Crazy. Couldn't yeah. hear well at all. Interesting. So I heard the question, tried to answer as well as I could. And uh, I just did my best to try and react <laughs> yeah. accordingly. But yeah, a few people mentioned that. They said, um, you know, like, because when I came off it, I was, I was panicking a little bit. I thought she was asking me what two plus two was. Mm. And I thought she said, I heard what was five plus five. Yeah. So I'm like, yes, yeah. 10. Let's go to someone who <laughs> like, <laughs> can answer this properly. And I was like, I'm just, just, pretty, yeah. just stay cool. You did it right. You did it right. But part of it was just like, you just did not answer what she asked. And then when I played it back, I was like, no, I did. I did. I just think she meant something else. But she might have been what, you, what you're saying. I didn't think about it that way until now. I was like, there's something... There's something in this square. She was a black woman, though. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. So I think it's N- I don't Naga. know, maybe. Naga? Yeah. I can't remember, but yeah, there was. I was a little bit like, hmm, that's a that's a very curious question that you've just asked. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good good diplomatic answer. I think you handled it very well. Thank um, you. Thank you. No, I think it shows the the challenges of, of being on TV as well. Mm. Again, people think, yeah, you just rock up and then you're there on TV. It's actually quite difficult, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Especially yeah. with the different scenarios mm-hmm. and. Um, Maybe yeah, we'll switch tact a bit and we'll talk a bit about um, awarding gaps. So we, we, I think we recently spoke mm-hmm. to a Professor Ijoma Achigbe um, who spoke about awarding gaps in universities and the kind of difficulties that it brings with, I think she mentioned, for example, with Asian and or with Chinese and Indian students at um, secondary school level, they achieve higher than I've everyone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they yeah. get to university and then almost all of that adv- um, advantage they have is nullified by the university experience. Mm-hmm. And again, yeah. with black people, highly underrepresented um, at the undergraduate level, and then it gets even worse Dips. from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, is there is there anything similar you see in the schools or anything since you've you've been teaching or your experience in terms of awarding gaps or in terms of how students are perceived i know things like predicted grades that have impact on on people's progression going forward um i don't know if you have any thoughts on that but i have to think about that one <laughs> um, i don't think i have anything tangibly useful mm-hmm. um i read not that article when you started i thought you were talking about a different article which was sort of uh i read recently um but no i don't I'd have to have a little research on that myself. Mm. No, I think mm. a good answer, I think. It is an interesting one because, yeah. like, it seems that black people um, are, you know, generally performing quite well. Mm. And then as soon as you get to university level, they plummet. 
And then uh, people from white demographics are generally performing averagely. Yeah. And then they suddenly take over everyone, the Chinese, the Indians, the, you know, the, these people, these other groups out. who yeah, were yeah, like yeah, performing yeah, yeah. really, really well at Key Stage 3 and, 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 and high school. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's an interesting one to yeah. explore. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't accept that it's just because black people are less smart than, no. than these no, other no. demographics. There's yeah. maybe something there under the surface. But yeah, yeah I guess if you haven't it's seen like anything getting about to, it. To, to what it is, like when any of these things Mm -hmm. Like, I always remember one of the lectures I went to was I, I've always I love this this fact. It was to do with um getting to causality, like what you're saying with with, with this. Why is it that black kids are getting to union in drivel? What, what, what's the reason? I don't know what it is. Obviously, we need to get to the bottom of it. Um, but the first lecture that sort of idea came to me. Oh, I, I, the way they explained it was um was in countries where more people drive Ferraris more people are getting cancer. Mm -hmm. And I think you mm -hmm. drop that thing. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what? It's like if you can shut countries by the number of people that drive for Ferraris per 10,000, the more that number goes up, the more people have cancer. Mm. So are the Ferraris causing cancer? <laughs> it's no, a good point. Yeah. Uh, no, they can't. Be, but, <laughs> well, I mean, if, if, if they go up, then the cancer goes up. Proportionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then this thing is like, no. If more people can afford Ferraris, then it's a, uh, a more first world nation. It's a more first world nation. People are living longer. They're not dying from other things. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Another one was was uh, was neat. Like where where do more, more, more shark attacks happen? People mostly die like in knee high of war or something. Like what? Never that's because you got more people. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So it's not that you're likely for that to happen, but you've got like ninety nine point nine percent of people in the war are in that. No, exactly, like, yeah. exactly. Um, different perspectives. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Seeing things from different perspectives. Oh, sorry, I went off on a tangent. No, 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 I no, 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 no. There was definitely a a, a a correlation point in there. Yeah. Like I could see what you <laughs> yeah. the connection that you were trying to make. Um, no, I think that so that report initially came from the Royal Society of Chemistry. I know you, you did some, you've done yeah, some work yeah, with them yeah. around mm -hmm. science experiments and and kicks and bringing that visibility. Can you just tell us a bit about that project? Yeah, that was back in I think November, so about six months ago. They've got some videos that are coming out to help um, science teachers in the classroom, so science teachers can subscribe. They can get a membership through their schools, and then they can use those videos to help show the class how to do a practical. So the whole idea was to make it as accessible and simple to understand as possible. So no wrapping, but using the logic of, <laughs> it's not written like a rap, but it's written cleanly and easy to understand, you know? So you take this, you take that, this is this, you put them together, this is what happens, et cetera. Um, Cause sometimes you, you, you know, the, the way they're written, it's in black and white, fairly easy to follow if, if you've been doing science for years, but if you're a kid, it can just be a little bit overwhelming. And the videos just make it that much easier to mm. so clearly explain and nice popping visuals. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. And again, I think it ties in really well with how you're trying to help everyone pay the bills on one on one hand, but also make sure that science is accessible for everyone. And yeah, yeah. though, especially I remember in the in the pandemic, me and my daughter started doing these little um, science experiments that they send to you home and. They were like little boxes of experiments. Yeah, I know the ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they became, I think it was M-E-L-E science, no, science or something yeah, like that. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you could we do science. Exactly, yeah. you could bring science home. And I think that's when the creativity really comes. Sometimes in a forced lab environment, etc., it's not always natural. But when you've got the opportunity to bring science home and it's accessible and it's free, as you said, it's, it's really rewarding. So yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's, it's amazing how you're finding so many different avenues mm. to make science attractive, as it were. It's not just from a teacher. You've gone from teaching to tutoring to rapping to um, videos and TV, and science is at the core of it. Mm. So I think mm. it's, it's really great work that you're doing. I appreciate it. I think you're like doing really well at reaching like a black demographic, which is really important because straight up facts they are underrepresented mm, you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and i think um having different identities people who look different and uh different people and styles to aspire to will actually maintain long-term longevity so yeah um big yeah. up but the result of it is that you're like actually famous now like <laughs> like you're legit famous so um i wanted to ask like <laughs> how do you find the balance between like that and like your family life i know you've got three kids yeah, um, yeah, yeah. is it hard to like bring do you bring the science home with you? <laughs> like, well, you know, I'm trying to get them into science, uh -huh. um, and and they love it. They always say, oh, "We did science today, Dad." I say, "What's your favorite subject?" They're like science. <laughs> better be. Better like, be. Better be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So yeah, the balance is 
I'll have to ask my wife on that one. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. the balance is there. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm able to take the kids to school every day and pick them up nearly every day. Um, and I think spend a good amount of time with them. Um, would always like to be more. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a balancing act. But as long as you've got priorities, there's always you know family first and everything else comes second. You haven't got a good argument when it's when it's time to tell them to get off their phones and get off get off social media. You're like, luckily we ain't got to that part yet because they uh, they're not on phones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do worry about that time. So, what would you say is your your proudest achievement? I think we saw you on the Voice with with Will I Am, much as a oh, yeah. pretty, pretty big deal. Yeah, 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 Smash yeah, that yeah, button! Yeah, 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 no, I know. Smash it. He was like, yeah. yeah. The, the curiosity yeah. definitely got the better of it. What was that experience yeah. like? And are, oh, are there any sorry. other achievements that you can say, yeah, you know what, if I, if I go today, that, that was worth it. Yeah, the voice is wild. I love the voice. I love the voice. I remember being a bit ambivalent about doing those sorts of shows because, you know, back in the day, you hear some bad stuff about people's experiences. Yeah. Um, and they can sort of try and make a fool of people and this, this, that and the other. But I thought it was worth the risk. And I, mm. I read stuff about how they are now. And i got to say, the the what's say customer care yeah mm. Is that the right word I will say customer care or mm. well being of, yeah. of contestants yeah. contestant yeah. care I think it was top notch they made sure we were looked after um and the whole experience was great all everyone I met there was great I still speak to a few of them now um, oh. I had a video with 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 Naya um he got through to the, I think the semi final so he went, went amazing through. yeah um I had other uh, collab videos with some of them so yeah it was great it was a great journey and that 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 um, buzzer smash moment. Yeah, that was a good one. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear like uh, you had to like practice it like to, to be ready for that kind of response? Because I guess it can be quite unnerving. Like, it, it you know is. what I mean? Like I, I would like probably drop my flow all of a sudden. If, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you got that kind of reception. You're like, oh, wait, wait, what am I doing here again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I learned from the first sort of public thing I ever did was a, uh, was a, a rap in a, um, for a social media thing called Shop Scott Bars. Um, and they were the first, I think they were the first outlet to let me come on and mm-hmm. do something. And I, was mm-hmm. like, wow. so I was proper happy. I went on and I'd rehearsed it a hundred times the night before. This is my obsessiveness coming in. Um, but to, even despite the hundred practices, flawless, when I went there the next day, they asked me, you ready? And I remember in my mind, I was like, yeah, it's going to be one take. But I was like, don't say that. Just in case, I was like, yeah, I'm ready. And then I got like 50% of the way through and then it collapsed. And we had to do like four takes to get it. Yeah. And from that moment, I was like, oh, when it's a different environment, it, it, fr- it throws you. And the voice, I mean, that was a, a next level of preparation. So, and yeah, my wife helped me with the chair turn. She just, that, so that, that was Gee. helpful. Because um, I, I was ready, but the chair turned, it would have put me off. But mm-hmm. luckily... Um, I prepared practice. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. made it funny emotionally because, like, I it was like no reaction. So if you, even if you see me, it wasn't like I was like, hey, yeah. I was just, 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 just stay in zone, yeah. stay in zone. And there's only one that finished. So I was like, hey, yeah. hey, I did this. All right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I rate it. I rate it a lot. Thank you, thank you. But I mean, I think you said about um, any other pride moment apart from that. I think it's just getting the following up and getting recognized for, for, for what I'm doing and, it, and it helping students. Um, Cause that's the main thing. When I get messages from students saying, I was getting a grade three, I'm now getting a grade four, I was getting a one, now I'm getting a four, whatever it is, I now understand this, I now get this, I now like this. Um, that's that's the point of pride for me. If those messages stop, then then I know I need to, I need to fix up. But as long as I get those, then I'm, I mean, I'm proud of myself and what I'm doing. Uh, don't, you should be, you should Thank be, because it's amazing work. Um, so we're both chemists. And we obviously rate the chemistry bars. <laughs> Have you got any exclusives? Oh. A little, little thing you want to drop? A little, just a little, just a little eight bar. I don't know, so a little flavor. If you want to drop, I have to freestyle something because I don't have anything prepared. And one thing I, I don't like to admit to most people is I'm very, very bad at memorizing lyrics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. write lyrics, but they do not stay in here. <laughs> yeah. Even when I film them, I've got filming tomorrow, and I have to literally. Then about 10 minutes mm. remembering two bars mm-hmm. and then I just do those Deliver two. It. So unfortunately, I don't think okay. I'm, I'm going to have anything good for you. If you want to pass, maybe tell me about like uh, like one or two of your favorite videos that you've made so far. Like Favorite videos yeah, I've made? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know what? One of my favorite videos was, was me and my wife went to film um, at my old athletics track. And it was her idea on the day. I was like, we've got to do um, 
metabolism, I think we were doing. Mm. And I was like, oh, aerobic respiration. And I was like, oh, should we go to the park and do it? I don't want to do it in the white wall. It just feels, we need something that's more about movement. Mm. And she's like, I want you to go to the athletics track. I was like, I'm going to argue with it. I was like, <laughs> that's a good idea. Brilliant. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a good idea. Yeah. So we went there and uh, yeah, she's very into fitness and she's very into running. So it's, I quite enjoyed that we just because it was just on the whim yeah. and the weather was beautiful outside. It was cold, but <laughs> it looked beautiful. <laughs> so it was a good shot. Went there. It's nice to go back to some a place I hadn't been to for 20 years. And then we ended up doing some exercise there. And yeah, that was that was a nice experience. And even, you know what, there was another one with my friends. Um, and uh, I probably shouldn't say this one because the, 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 <laughs> the quality of the production was very low. Mm -hmm. At the time, I thought it was amazing. It was a, we did a Ghostbusters remake, and that 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 was hella fun to do. That amazing. I had all my friends; they were just mucking around, just shooting each other with these guns, and uh, I thought it was a masterpiece the day after. And almost every video I look, I made back then, I look at, it and I said, you know what, this is quite good. I haven't got to that cringe part, or but I look at that, I'm like, I've either got really good friends or really bad friends because they knew that it was terrible. <laughs> Oh, but they, they, they wanted to they, they, they just beat you up yeah. <laughs> some day ones yeah <laughs> um, but yeah so it's kind of when, when I've got like my nearest and dearest to me those are the videos I tend to enjoy the most and that's why I mentioned those two love that love that thank you thank you for sharing and no, uh, good. I'll follow you up for that exclusive <laughs> a different day <laughs> well you you actually dropped some bars as well so I think we're going to have to come back and, and figure out a way to you know, to, to bring the two of you together chemistry yeah, bars yeah, got a couple yeah. chemistry bars here and there dying about in the folder okay <laughs> <laughs> shall we go to a quick quick yeah call? yeah if it's okay with you we're, but we're basically done but we just want to hit you with a couple of quick fire questions yeah sure um, just, to, just to wrap up on a little bit of a, a casual level if that's okay. cool so start off with favorite food. God, I'm gonna be the worst in this round. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized how quick everyone knows. Quick. My friends, my anything that's important in the question, I'm slower. Um, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Probably chicken korma. Mm. Dope, dope, dope. Okay, fair play. Um, favorite uh, artist. Tupac. Excellent. Trying to make up on the previous yeah. question. I was, like, I was going to say genre, but I was like, it's probably coming. Two way. <laughs> Next one's a tricky one. Favorite quote or expression, if you've got one. Or a verse. You? Okay, I've got a quote. Yeah. I've got a quote. Don't put me on verses. No. <laughs> the second there's pressure, the lyrics just disintegrate. The verse, this one comes from my, from my dad, this one. He was said, um, if, you, uh, if you worry, it will happen. Mm. If you don't worry, it will happen anyway. <laughs> So, so why worry? What why does worry? I love that. I feel like I've, I've I stuck that. to that less and less as time's gone on, and if kids kids have arrived. Yeah, yeah. Big up pops for that yeah, one because yeah, that's the a, worry yeah. <laughs> doesn't change whether it's going to happen. Yeah, or yeah, one, does yeah. It? yeah. Favorite uh, hobby or pastime or activity that like you like together? Oh, on the it's weekend? real boring now. It's just gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No time for sports. It's Fitness just... first. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite icon or hero? Icon or hero? God, I mean, I, s I guess you you are one now, so it's, uh, it's kind of difficult. To, you can pass. It's like, guys, 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 come on. <laughs> that's, that's a difficult one. Right you come back to so that pass one, it, man. Pass yeah. it, pass it. Dream location. If you could be anywhere in the world for a holiday, be location, where where would you be? Oh, it's got to be Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. Cuba. Any any island, yeah. really. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that there's a Caribbean island out there that's got a magical temperature of like 26 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> From what I understand, that doesn't exist. <laughs> Still searching. Yeah. If you find it, let, let yeah. me know. I was going to say least favorite STEM subject, but I think you've already given me yeah, physics, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about like uh, like a, your biggest pet peeve? Like something that rubs you up the wrong way? God, pet peeve. I feel like I've got so many. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've got so many, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Probably. No, I can't. I can't. Go we'll pass it, man. Pass it. Pass pass it. I told you I'm going to be terrible. That's all right, man. No worries. Next one. Do you have any fears or phobias? Anything? I do, actually. I have a really weird phobia. What? I'm not sure whether I should say this. <laughs> How PG is it? How what? How PG is it? Is it, is oh, it it's PG? PG, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fully PG. Um, Ali's is clown, yeah. so it can't, it can't be worse than <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. My, my one is... um. Is close-ups of insects' faces. Oh, <laughs> they used to. I, so you must have really struggled with those wow. textbooks then, of like there's, Honestly, there's the tarantula. The yeah. Sometimes I close it or I put something on it. 
Fair <laughs> play. And and my wife thinks I'm weird. Most people think I'm weird with it because they're like, oh, you can't pick up. I can pick up an insect, no problem. Oh, it's, it's just, just the, if you yeah. zoom into zoom his in. face. Bye bye. <laughs> that's so interesting um, i don't know where it came from i don't know why it's there i don't know why like people can be afraid of spiders and i'll pick up the spider mm. Mm. but if as i was holding it you had a you literally was like Micro- yeah. magnifying glass. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. and the last one is uh what animal best represents you oh i'd like to say a lion because of the size thing you know but no <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, I've always liked, I like lions. I, I used to like mice when I was younger, but really? lions I like now. Yeah. Lions to mice, wow. Mm. Mice to lions. Mice to lions. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. Well, so, thank you, man. This has been, this has been epic. It's been a good yes. joke and uh, really, really nice to get your perspective on some of these points that we're trying to discuss. I think Thanks. you're doing amazing work. I'm sure you're going to continue to do the same degree of amazing work. Everyone go follow Matt Green on every single platform that you can see. What's the handle? MattGreen.jgm boom Love it. um Love it. yeah so much amazing content to be shared if you're in high school or even earlier um you will have a lot to learn so definitely be sure to check him out and uh support the team thank you very much special gift from our sponsors at the motherland market for you oh, there. thank you very much thank you for coming hey, and yeah we like right. to Give people's, I think, yeah, especially as a gym lover, that, that towel will probably come in quite handy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thank you very much. Like if thank not, you. you can repurpose it as, as needed. It. Um, yeah. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, we wish you all the best and we look forward to collaborating in the future. 100%. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. No problem. No problem. And to everyone listening, thank you for checking out the podcast. We'll be back same time, two weeks from now on Wednesday. Catch you then. Peace. <laughs>